Hello and welcome back to my channel known as The Deadly Kind. If you haven't subscribed yet, please take a minute to do so and be sure to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when I post a new video. Now this story is going to be about Susan Lee Smith. Susan was born September 26, 1971 to Linda Sue Harrison and Harry Ray Vaughn. That makes her zodiac sign the Libra. Now, this low-life bitch was tried and convicted of killing her two infant sons back in October of 1994. It has been stated that Susan's home life wasn't stable and that her father, who was a violent alcoholic, committed suicide when Susan was only six years old. Susan also attempted suicide at the age of 13. Knowing what I know about this evil woman, it's too bad she didn't succeed. I know I shouldn't judge, but how can you kill your own babies? After her father's suicide, her mother then married Beverly Russell, who was a member of the local chapter of the Christian Coalition. It was later revealed that Harrison molested Smith when she was a teenager. One newspaper claimed that the sexual relations between them had continued until six months before the murders. Susan attempted suicide again after graduating high school in 1989 because the married man she was having an affair with decided to end the relationship. She then went on to marry a man named David Smith, and it's said that the relationship was a rocky one due to several allegations of cheating, which caused them to separate a couple of times, but during the marriage, they conceived two boys. Then on October 25, 1994, Smith had reported to police that she was a victim of a carjacking. She stated that the offender was a black man and that he left with her two sons. Smith made dramatic pleas on national TV for nine days for the safe return of her sons. But after an extreme and nationwide search for the two boys, on November 3, 1994, Smith finally broke down and confessed that she allowed her car to roll into the nearby John D. Long Lake, killing her sons by letting them drown while still buckled into the back seat in their car seats. It had been reported that she did this so she could be with the man she had been in a relationship with named Tom Finlay. It was also stated that before the murders, Finlay had ended the relationship with Smith because he told her he did not want to have any children. Smith went on to say she hadn't planned the murders and that she was not in the right frame of mind when she went through with it. Later investigations revealed that detectives doubted Susan's story from the start because each time she was interviewed, her statement would change just slightly, but it was enough to raise suspicion. So they believed she had done harm or worse, even killed her sons. It was on the second day that police believed Smith knew of the whereabouts of her sons and they had hoped that they would find them alive. Investigators went on to search the nearby lakes and ponds, including the John D. Long Lake, where their bodies were eventually found. Now, initial water searches did not locate the car because the police believed that it would have been within 30 feet from the shoreline, so they didn't go any further out than that, but it turned out that the car had actually rolled 122 feet from the shore. After the boys had been missing for two days, Smith and David were subjected to a polygraph test. David passed, but Susan's was inconclusive. The biggest crack in the case was her description of where the carjacking had taken place. She had claimed that a traffic light had turned red, causing her to stop at an otherwise empty intersection. However, it was determined that the light would not have turned red for her unless a vehicle was present at the intersecting road. This conflicted with her statement that she did not see any other vehicles there when the carjacking took place. 
On July 18, 1995, David Bruck and Judy Clark served as co-counsel for Smith. In their opening statement, Clark argued Smith was deeply troubled and suffered from severe depression. Clark also told the jury that this is not a case about evil. This is a case about despair and sadness. The defense's theory of the case was that Smith drove to the edge of the lake to kill herself and her two sons, but her body willed itself out of the car. The prosecution, on the other hand, believed she murdered her sons in order to start a new life with her former lover. It only took the jury two and a half hours to convict her of murdering them. During the penalty phase, Tommy Pope, the lead prosecutor in Smith's case, argued passionately in favor of sentencing Smith to death. The jury voted against the death penalty. Too bad, I say. During Smith's murder trial, her stepfather, Beverly Russell, testified that he and Smith had consensual sexual relations two months before she drowned her sons. He also admitted sexually assaulting Smith when she was 16, but said that she and her mother never pressed charges. Russell asked the jury to spare Smith's life because he bore some of the responsibility of the crime. I'm just curious why his ass isn't in jail. Smith was incarcerated in the Administrative Segregation Unit in the Camille Griffin Graham Correctional Institution in Columbia, South Carolina. Now, during Smith's incarceration at the Camellia, the Camille Griffin Graham Correctional Institute, two correctional officers, Lieutenant Houston Cagle and Captain Alfred R. Rowe, Jr. were charged after having sex with her. Consequently, she was moved to the Leith Correctional Institute in Greenwood. It is said that she set this up to where she could be moved so she could be closer to her mother and get visitations from her. She will be eligible for parole in November 2024, and I hope she's denied. Her son's names were Michael Daniel, who was three years old at the time of his murder, and little Alexandra Tyler was 14 months old. They never get to play again, breathe air, or see their father. I don't believe this monster should be able to do anything, any of these things either. Had it been left up to me, I would have taken her on a 122-foot car ride into the John D. Long Lake strapped in the back seat of a car. I know I'm not supposed to judge, but this is, this is just, un it pisses me off. Okay, my friends, that's the story of Susan Smith. I hope you liked it, and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when I post another video. With all the wrong and sick things happening in today's time, y'all please stay aware of your surroundings and be safe out there. Until next time, I pray you have peace and comfort in your life.